And welcome everybody here in Twitch chat and everybody on YouTube for some Kindred Lux. We're going to be playing two Lux decks back to back here on this Wednesday night stream. And that's going to be a lot of fun. So our first one here is going to be a Shadow Isles version with Lux, a spooky Lux deck where we're going to be playing Kindred for our other champion. Uh, so we got a brand new champion here, Kindred, which looks like I'm getting a little bit of champion mastery on. So that's cool. And so we're going to want to slay units with Kindred. And remember, you don't have to slay the opponent's units. You can slay your own units. And we're going to be doing some of that. We're going to have Spirit Leech in here for some card draw. Glimpse Beyond in here for some card draw that both can slay units and help out our Kindred. The box is a card that I really haven't liked before. Um, you know, like before I'd much rather play cards like Withering Whale, uh, Grass the Undying, all that kind of stuff. I've always just been really disappointed with this card. However, with that being said, I can see its use more in this format with these uh, sand soldiers that come in um, whenever you attack and so I, I, I do understand that how the box can can uh, work out kind of well in this format with these sand soldiers so I'm, I'm happy to play a couple of those got a lot of other cool top end spells I love having an unyielding spirit in here to be able to protect Lux and Kindred that's pretty nice we'll have like our turn three remembrance some games if we need that but we also have Radiant Guardians we have some good um, access to some life steal with the radiant with the remembrance also being able to be a radiant guardian at times um and that's kind of our deck you know just like some early things to sacrifice some you know a couple of little removal spells here and there should be a pretty cool one so there we go kindred lux we're gonna go play our five games in ranked and we'll kind of see how we do with both of these lux decks the next one i just have it labeled as shurima lux because it's going to be um you know of course obviously with the region shreema but lux will be by herself as the only champion in that deck i'm going to definitely mulligan this card and i think i keep the rest baiting icon gives us something to do early glimpse beyond always does its thing we did just get this hapless aristocrat prismatic earlier in the stream And I'll leave this old one back. It'll save two life, but that's not worth it. So we both use two cards. They have nothing to show for it. I have just a little 1-1 one, one and no one to show for it. They have one extra mana, though. Let's make sure we attack for that zero. Got him. No, they... So much for having that one extra mana. Dubs Blackspear. Man, drawing cards is good. Yeah, we're basically just a, a control deck that's going to be based around both of our champions that end up end up just kind of doing a lot. Like they both Kindred and Lux can be used as multiple removal spells um, against different decks. You know, like Kindred can Kindred can slay units. Lux can make final sparks that slays units. And so we, we're just going to be a control deck kind of sitting behind those and wiping out their board. No, I'm going to play Kindred. Don't want them to challenge. Is like ruination an option? Okay, vengeance. I fight for the fallen. You will be scoured from 
this land. They weren't expecting callers. Lady Elise, where are you? I do not want to let them draw two cards. Yeah, I really don't want to let them draw two cards. I think I could probably figure out how to deal with a 4-3. Not really that scared of a 4-3. So we have almost three times as many cards in hand as they do. Can we take advantage of all these cards? Destroy a mana gem to draw a champion. Okay. Can't really stomp that. I can pass. I'm not... I'm not going to have too many cards in hand or anything like that. Alright, getting this Thresh out of here before it levels up. I feel like they drew another Thresh, right? I feel like if they had a Gnosis, they would have played Gnosis. So I think that's going to be another Thresh. Called it. So like a double black spear. Let the light guide you. I want to get this Lux in play. They forgot. You, you cannot. All right, one black spear in. Which means we're part way to having a level up Lux. One's a god. This would be four, five, six. Which would be bad. I thought I had. Oh, yeah, there's Spirit Leech. I was going to say, I thought I had Spirit Leech in my hand. Sounds good. So the Black Spear should happen first. To level up Lux. And then the box happen. And so now Lux will have four mana on it. And those two cards better be pretty good that they got. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right, card draw is good. We got a bunch of Glimpse Beyonds and Spirit Leeches. Card draw is good. One and oh. Okay. Twisted Faint Fizz. So we don't have Withering Whale, even though we would like to have it. Um, Vengeance has got to be too expensive, so we'll send that back. Got to be. The other option besides Hapless Aristocrat, so the, it was the three options that we had that we did the vote in the chat here. Chat voted on Hapless Aristocrat. It was that. It was either that. It was all cheap units. It was either that or Oblivious Islander was another option. Or the third option was, and the one that I probably would have gone with myself, but we went with the chat vote, was the... 3-1 Tough Overwhelm for 2 mana in Freljord, whose name escapes me at the second. I will find 
Um, Ruthless Raider. Ruthless Raider. Anything else? <laughs> Ballistic Bot is just solid. So if I have something die, I could go with this Remembrance. Or we can just Spirit Leech. Luck's been doing good so far. We, we've only played one Lux game so far, and we won it. It looked good. Are they considering passing to me? I'm always up for a round or two. Nope. Guess not. Something for all of you. Hopefully you're Radiant Guardian. No. I want a Radiant Guardian. That ballistic bot and free spells. I don't like it. Rather save this vile feast for a uh, purple fish that we got to kill. <laughs> Let him think it's luck. Alright, so you can use two Vile Feasts to kill Twisted Fate. I think I just wait. Yeah, the... the um, That 1-3 just like helps out their Fizz a bunch, helps out their Burble Fishes a bunch, all that kind of stuff. Like, getting that extra spell every single turn helps out like their... It just helps out so much stuff. Wow. Double pick a card. Back it up. Charmed, I'm sure. Okay. So they're gonna draw seven cards right here and level this up. Well, they have six fleeting cards, so they're going to have to start playing a whole bunch of stuff. So since they have six fleeting cards, they need to play a lot of stuff. And if they play a lot of stuff, we can maybe play the box and kill it all. Eyes open. Yeah, they could have stress testing. That's sad. Lady Luck is smiling. Pretty easy block because this thing dies to gold card anyway. And right now they'd be losing a bunch of fleeting cards, so I'll just pass. Mind meld and two get excited. Gone. Okay. Well, they again got those fleeting cards. Yeah, so I mean, I could remembrance. What I'm worried about is if I remembrance and then, you know, get like a get a final spark, kill the, the, the twist of fate with the final spark. What I'm worried about is like this turn that they're able to go. A whole bunch of burble fishes, and then I don't have mana for the box anymore because I just because I did that instead. That's my worry. But I think this is probably worth it because this this would be hopefully we can kill this twisted fate before it does too much more. 
Yeah, pass. It, it's either it's either play this remembrance or pass. Like those are the two options. Pass. Let them let them like play their cards. Get their fleeting cards. Get their red gold card and stuff before we would remembrance. Certainly possible, if not probable, they have another twist of fate. Discarded a stress testing. I'm a people person. One, yeah, they played. One pick a card was a twist of fate pick a card, I believe, and I think the other the other two were normal. I definitely know one was a twist of fate, but I think that was it, it was just one. Okay, so they didn't go too crazy, which is good for my the the box. And I I like trading Lux for Fizz, considering I couldn't block that Fizz or do anything about it. Alright, so these two cards are both one mana spells. So they only have three other cards that I really care about. Alright, so now there's two one mana spells and some other good spell. Alright, that was one of the one mana spells. So they have some card they got from Sprayfin, and then some card they drew normally. That was a very, very good quality, the box. I gotta admit. This is worth doing the Glimpse Beyond to turn on the Radiant Guardian, then attacking with Radiant Guardian. Unyielding Spirit, or... <laughs> uh, we'll just do another one. Yeah, that was that was honestly the best box I've ever seen, too. I've seen a lot of the box, and that was the best one I've ever seen, also. So I can't be too mad at that card. Will be I should have played Aristocrat first. All right, we're looking good. If they put too much power out there, I can ruin Asian. Well, a little late for that now. Seven, put me to seven. All right, 2-0. That was a good win. Thank you, the box. I guess I shouldn't talk bad about you anymore, should I? <laughs> he won us that game. Ooh, Twisted Fate Swain. It's a good deck. I asked people here in Twitch chat what are their favorite decks to win against. 
and um, I, I still my favorite is still Ophelia. So that's that's like my I guess the, the kind of the question is like what's your least favorite thing? But it's Ophelia. So we got Lissandra. Anything with Teemo. Anything with Twisted Fate. Fiora. Oh yeah, Fiora. Fiora's a good one. We got Deep. Oh, I, why am I playing that? My whole plan was to go turn three Remembrance. I yeah, I guess Aphelios is not my favorite thing to play again, so I guess I shouldn't say that's my favorite thing to defeat because I don't, I don't like playing against it. It's like my least favorite thing to play against. Be nothing left when I'm done. Defeating Twisted Fate Fizz is a big accomplishment. It really is. Yeah, so maybe that's my favorite thing to defeat, because I also don't really mind playing against Twisted Fate Fizz as, like, the the games are over pretty fast. I like the I like the faster games, myself. Um, they should let this happen. Uh, yeah, aggro is fun to play against, and then, like, whenever you beat aggro, you definitely feel good and stuff, so I guess, I guess that's a thing. It's like, Aggro decks are usually pretty fun to play against when it, you know, like you, you see like that uh, pull ahead and everything, and you get some good games. So I could see them going Twisted Fate Red card, and that would turn my Remembrance into being three mana. I'm always up for a round or two. I'm got them. They think they got me, but I got them. Kindred. Yuppie, I talk to spirits. These are my rules. Never one without the other. Its heart beats fast now. It knows. Hmm. Well, that's too bad. I do have. I got backup kindred. And I just have. You know, I had five five mana cards in hand, so definitely felt like playing one of them. Wonder if I pass. That gets me back even on mana. Okay. I'm a little bit more scared of this kindred dying now. It's still like my best thing to play, right? Like it doesn't make sense to play Radiant Guardian. I can do the two drop, four drop thing, but then I'm kind of stuck for the next turn. Maybe I'd just play this two drop and pass, and then have like spell mana to go along with Kindred Spear Leech the next turn. That would make sense. So we both have eight cards in hand. I got some more draw twos, but I got more draw one. I think that's seven now. Car too slow. I guess I, you know, I could have gone the concerted strike, and I guess maybe I should have done that. One, concerted strike is too important for Leviathan, though. I have to save that card. Oh, I get to play two spells and get to red card. Something for all. Good turn for them. Really good turn for them. 
I play this, I'm looking at 9 mana next turn. Gosh, 9 is just not... Kindred Spirit Journey with Radiant Guardian is kind of cool. You can, like, reset it. Actually, not bad. Come on. So you have two options. Or, like, you know, just let it happen, but I could, I could Spirit Journey my own Kindred and save it. I can... Yeah, the new one will, won't be stunned. Yeah, so I can save it with this. And so I guess I just do. I don't really want to do that. I could could just could have also like killed my radiant guardian and reset it to 5 so it wouldn't it wouldn't be damaged and also, you know, mark one of these things, but I guess marking something doesn't really matter. Hey, sleep, going good. So they've used two flocks already, right? Like, yeah. If if they would have responded to that spirit journey with a third flock, that would have been real bad for me. But best run while you can. You pay first. They're all about the one damage. They're playing Blade's Edge and Death Lotus. Unyielding Spirit's pretty nice. I think it could be, right? Like, we can Unyielding Spirit one of these things, but... Um... I wasn't expecting Riptide at all. I was expecting Leviathan. I feel like like you just play like three Leviathans, and then getting more eight drops than that, like you'd play Captain Farron. Like Riptide, it was not that was not an expectation I had in the slightest. You will be scoured from this land. This goes this way. Strike for justice. We live here. So it's, it's going to mark this one when you mark the other one. Gross. I guess we did slay a unit with the mark, though, so it does count towards Kindred's level up. Only fools play the hand they're dealt. Um, I just have to kill that before they start playing more stuff and getting blue cards and all that kind of stuff. I was, kind of, I was planning on playing Double Radiant Guardian this turn. The Empire, above all. Well, I'm really glad that Death Sand is out of their hand. Hey, Patek. Destination in sight. Bring these lands to them. If I go Concerted Strike to kill Leviathan with that, is there anything that they can have that would stop Concerted Strike from killing Leviathan? I'm not sure. Let's let's play this Lux first, actually. The sun is shining. We should too. Yeah, they they got some shiny cards over here. They they play this deck a lot. They got some mastery, some shiny cards. Yeah, not at four mana, right? I don't think they can stop this. I need to draw something like super small to sacrifice to these glimpse beyond next turn. Like if this works, because now I have five out of six. I don't want to play vengeance. Best possible draw is a one mana card this next turn. 
So like hapless aristocrats, my best possible draw. I go, I go hapless plus glimpse beyond, level this up, then I still have vengeance. All right, here it is, hapless aristocrat. Cost too much mana. I won't have vengeance available. Wait, why don't I just do this? Yeah, that's smart. That's smart. I figured it out. Kindred can't die. I've been hiding my life too long. I guess I could have also just vile feasted to have two mana that way. I'm fine. It's it's all right. I'm fine with the Raiding Guardian dying. I'm fine with it. Ah, I wanted them to play a Leviathan and then out Vengeance. Because then like Vengeance plus that other thing. But yeah, so like they they wanted to play Levi they wanted me to do something else and then they're gonna play Leviathan. That's what it felt like. There we go. We got them. That was their hope. Yeah, the chase ends. More lie ahead. Azir. Box was good again. We got to kill a Twisted Fate with the box. A leveled up Twisted Fate with the box. I need to stop complaining about that card. Alright, Lux, I'm going to mulligan you. And I will keep the rest. I'll just pass. You never know. We could draw Remembrance. I don't need to, like, tell my opponent, hey, I got a hapless aristocrat. I mean, I guess I could attack for one. I don't I don't think we're going to win this game because we dealt one damage on turn one. So just Azir. Definitely going to be real aggressive. Remembrance would definitely be good. Mm, it's too bad. So while I can block and block and glimpse beyond, if I do that, I like don't really have mana left. Yeah, I think I can. So my hand's not great. I I really don't like you know like we drew like this concerted strike, this Lux. We've really not been drawing very well. Those are not cards that I want. Now I don't have mana for the box anymore. Which, this could have been a really good box turn, depending on what they do, with the Clockling coming into play. And now a Phantom Prankster, yeah. <laughs> so getting punished for the Glimpse Beyond. But I guess I guess if I would not have cast Glimpse Beyond, then I would not have had mana for the box. You know, like I, I wouldn't have drawn the box yet, right? Because like, we wouldn't have been that far down our deck. So it's fine. Yeah, not a good, not a good hand for us. It's First three turns, the only card we played that affected the board was a hapless aristocrat. Doesn't get too much worse than that. Alright, so kind of box value, but also Phantom Prankster value for them. Block a 
them both. Alright, but the box clump coming in clutch again. Can we stay alive? Embrace life. Expect death. Come on, Kindred. Help save me. Help save me. No, don't have card advantage. No, run out of cards. Yuck. Not a bad draw. How do I get this Radiant Guardian in play? I think we're gonna have to wait till next turn. me mark in the O3. I guess I don't block that. So I take one either way, whether I block this or not. This whole blocking situation makes it pretty difficult for me to play the Radiant Guardian, where if I keep one of these things alive, then, you know, I get to glimpse beyond one of these things and then play Radiant Guardian. So that would be, like, blocking something like this. Keep the five two alive, but that keeps that keeps both of those alive for them. Go to six like this. I think we'll do that. So we we take two extra damage. Cause like if we if we block we take one. If we don't block we take three. So we take two extra damage. But this should by keeping this one one, it should more easily enable the Radiant Guardian next turn, which is the important thing. Chomp. Kindred with the chompers. Yeah, we got the prankster. We'll mark the cursed keeper. And of course, I want to do this before combat because I want to be able to attack with the Radiant Guardian. The good thing is that they don't get to just... Yeah, they can't even block with that thing. Now I have Concerted Strike to go along with Radiant Guardian. Really hoping no removal spells, right? Like, if they have, like, a Black Spear or a Vengeance or, you know, like, anything like that. Really bad for us. Or they're going infinite with Unto Dusk. No Glimpse Beyond, please. The Prankster is okay. Like, we could be... Like, Radiant Guardian will beat Prankster. I'm not scared of the Prankster. I'm scared of... Cool. I'm scared of no, like, Glimpse Beyond. Like, we'll be able to outpace Prankster. I'm not too worried about that. Like, Vengeance or Glimpse Beyond or that kind of stuff. Like, stuff to keep us from, from healing our Nexus or a Black Spear. Is me going to three? This is me going from nine to ten. All right, nine to ten with every single thing they have dying works out. And there we go. We're four and zero. Good job, Raiding Guardian. GGS. 
scouts. I'm gonna face some more aggro, playing some scoots. Alright, Kindred Luck, see if you can get the 5 0. -oh. We got. We got a good four cards. We're gonna keep all four. Yeah, Radiant Guardian should definitely be great against Scouts. The box should also be great against Scouts. So we'll see. The thing is, is like, even, like, decks that have good matchups against Scouts still will lose to Scouts depending on the hand that Scouts have. Scouts can just have hands that just destroy everything, basically. You know, like, if they have, uh, you know, like your, uh, you know, like your Misfortunes or your Grand Plazas, if you, if you need that, but like your Rallies with your Misfortune and they just have, like, um, a really well-timed Rangers Resolve and stuff like that. Like, it's a it's a super scary deck. And so, like, even if you think you have a good matchup, you can still definitely lose. All right, prediction. Rat to do that. Start it here. Uh, that card's good against me. Yeah, that card's pretty good against me. Not too shabby. It takes a lot of stones to play that card. Love that we made Screeching Dragon. That's like that's the best possible dragon to make with Egghead Researcher, especially for this matchup. Definitely love that we did that. Want to play a Misfortune? Nope. Well, I can't ruin Asian next turn anyway because of the Stony Suppressor. Oh, that's not a Ranger's Resolve. They were thinking about playing. I was going to play the box. But I guess playing Black Spear is safer. Nah. Either way, the box is going to be a two for one. It's going to either trade with Ranger's Resolve and Valor. Or, ooh, there we go. Alright, that's cool, that's cool. Alright, that worked out pretty well. We are at 15 life. Not bad. Dude, the box has been incredible for us. This card that I was like saying I I don't like and I've I've always thought it's not good. And it's just like every single game it's the best card in our deck. <laughs> Alright, let's mess some folks up. Alright. Splash. This is a cool animation though. Splash. I'm one of the good guys, but not that good. Not that good. Okay. So Radiant Guardian would cost five, which would mean I'd have three extra mana, which would be enough for a glimpse beyond. Besides that, if I go so if I go concerted strike, I'm not doing anything else. Just one mana short from doing st cool stuff. Yeah, that's Oppressor, real rude. That's Oppressor, the rudest. Not the egg. I don't think I'm gonna... I'm, I'm just gonna save my spell mana. Love ya. I fight for the fallen. Radiant Guardian has also been incredible for us. It's like the box in Radiant Guardian have been our all-stars. This one's not over. I don't know. Like, So what, what can they have? They have like some sharp sights. Repose. Rally. Feels like rally. Doesn't it? Doesn't that feel like a rally? 
So if I block here... Yeah, I think I block here. Because I think I think Repost would have saved Quinn last turn if they had Repost, I think. I think they had the man for Repost. Maybe not. I guess that was two turns ago. Ooh, okay, okay. That's probably silly. You will be scoured from this land. That's probably silly. I have like Concerted Strike, Black Spear, Black Spear that can kill Misfortune. And so I'm not killing Misfortune, but like I said, that's probably silly. I Yeah, I was gonna say I can't imagine we lose from here now. <laughs> And there we go. Alright, so we finished up a 5-0 with Kindred Lux. That's incredible. So that's that's not easy to do in rank. Don't have too many of those. Um, and so our, our deck looked really, really good. And of course, the card that I was uh, saying I didn't really like before just performed so incredibly well. The box won us multiple games kind of by itself. Um, yeah, it was just awesome. And then having Radiant Guardian was clutch also. We did play against a lot of aggressive decks or a lot of decks that were attacking. Um, the Twisted Fate Swain deck isn't really an aggressive deck, but they do a lot of Nexus damage, and having Radiant Guardian in that matchup was really important as well, especially with the tough. So those two cards were really, really important. But I liked having, you know, like this kind of deck, like where you just play a whole bunch of like little cheap stuff, you sacrifice them with your Spirit Leech, your Glimpse Beyond. Um, I think this just this just played really really well. Um, Violet built this deck. Violet here in Twitch chat, and they I think they really designed it really well. Um, you know, Black Spear performed great, awesome removal spell there. Um, I I don't like Hapless Aristocrat that much, and so like looking at the deck list, I'm like, eh, I don't like Hapless Aristocrat. I would want like more Egghead Researcher or other stuff. But honestly, for this deck, for how it played, Hapless Aristocrat was really important. You need it there for the Spirit Leech. That's something you need. And you just need, you need like those little 1-1 one -one spiders because you need them around for, like I said, for Spirit Leech, for Glimpse Beyond, and then for Kindred and Radiant Guardian. You need like those extra things that, um, you know, make your Radiant Guardian good that allow you to um, have an ally die this round. You need those allies. And so, yeah, it was really impressive. Um, so Fading Icon, Hapless Aristocrat did a great job of that. So, it, yeah, so I think this is a, a really good deck. If, you, if you're playing against a lot of aggressive decks right now, um, you know, give this one a try. I think that this this worked out really well. I'd have to say that as far as cards I was disappointed in, if any, I'd have to maybe say Concerted Strike felt pretty expensive for what it does. I'm not sure. But, but the thing is, is, like, when you play Radiant Guardian, you definitely want cards that fight. So, like, yeah, because... Hmm. Because we did have that, that one game there, game four, where we got to, like, you know, use a, a fight spell with the Radiant Guardian, so that's important. So maybe, yeah, so I guess that was good, too. Yeah, it was just all good. Everything worked out really well, and that's that's going to be some variance. You know, maybe if we play this again, maybe we only go 2-3 three, or 3-2, three, you know, like how there's always variance in, in games. But I think there's a lot of good power here and just a lot of flexibility, and that's important. And both our champions are awesome with kindred and lux just can they can just take over the game and they just change your opponent's game plan so much that once you like slam a kindred slam a lux um out there then they have to uh you know they really have to change what they're doing and get rid of those champions immediately electronic immediately all right but that's it here for kindred lux uh, really good one. So again, try this deck out. Those of y'all on YouTube, um, we've had three great decks in a row. That Elisa Zier two decks ago on YouTube was incredible. The first game was nonsense. Don't don't worry about that. After that first game, we went 5-0. We you know played five in a row. And that deck was awesome. The Nightfall Aggro we just played. If you missed that video, that deck was incredible and did some awesome stuff. I really just kind of fooled around and just had fun and lost two games that were definitely winnable. Um, so that, that one could have been a 5-0 also. Um, so yeah, three awesome decks here. I guess they all have Shadow Isles, so maybe there's something there. Um, yeah, three Shadow Isles decks. But yeah, so those are like some different stuff. If you like playing aggro a whole lot, check out that Elisa Zier. If you like playing midrange, maybe the Nightfall aggro, it's kind of more midrange range TBH. Um, and then if you like control, this kind of kindred luck. So um, yeah, three great decks we've played so far. But next, we're going to have another 
Lux deck, pairing it with Shirima, and so we'll see how that one does. But those of y'all on YouTube, try them out. Leave those comments. Let me know with the three decks, how they're going for you, how do you like them, um, you know, all that kind of stuff. I love seeing those comments, and I really appreciate the feedback, you know, like because I, I just played five games here. We're going to keep playing different, different decks, so um, the feedback that y'all give me on the decks is much appreciated whenever y'all try them out and let me know how they go. All right, but that's it here for Kindred Lux. So thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you for the next video.